All right, hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about clothing, All right? So in the summertime, in the winter, in a rainy environment, uh, we have to wear certain things, especially in class. And certain people show up, uh, especially if it's their first class and not know what to wear. And sometimes they're uh, either confused by it at first or don't understand how long they're gonna be out in the sun or in the rain or in the cold. And so I wanted to go over a few things and kind of get people a little bit more educated on it and also it gives somebody to uh, that hasn't done this before uh, some kind of starting point so if you don't spend a lot of time out outside or in the outdoors and you still want to come to a shooting class most good classes are outdoors not to say there's not indoor ones there's obviously indoor ones as well um, but the, the you get the the most you know bang for your buck when you could shoot in different directions and be outdoors for a little bit um, it's also some somewhat good for your health to be outside versus inside compared to uh, on ranges. So when, when we talk about that, like let's talk about like what do we wear? Hey, what's up guys? So here's winter edition, right? So cold weather, um, depending on how cold, right? There's gonna be some different levels there, but depending on how cold it is, you may want to start dif differentiating the way that you dress based off of like what you normally do. and it's different from, hey, I'm just running to the store, it's cold out, um, or I'm gonna be outside for 10 hours cold out. So very important that you kind of look at the differences there and, and start gauging them for yourself. So first off, let's talk about like the bottoms, right? So legs, um, so leg wise, depending on the weather, um, whether it's super cold in the sense, or to me, right? So if it's above, usually above the 40s, um, I will wear still my lightweight hiking cool pants and um, I will just double down with them in the sense of putting some kind of uh, under layer or some kind of long johns on underneath them. So I have, I usually use two different types. There's a lighter weight one and a thicker weight one. So my lighter one, if it's in the fifties, like it's not even that cold, but if it's like in the 30s at night and stuff like that, then I start thinking about these guys. Um, with that said, if it's like super windy, like the area is just open and it's very windy, I will definitely still wear one of these because I'm a tropical man and the cold doesn't usually function well with me, but <laughs> but I do my best this. So, and I still go out in it as much as possible, but usually the lightweight hiking pants mixed with some kind of long johns works really good. So I like doing that for like colder weather um, or cooler weather, let's say. And then when it starts getting even colder than that, like it's sub thirties for me, right? That's cold. Um, that's when I start getting thicker and I start wearing more thicker pants or more like my combat pants from Cry and potentially still put on some form of um, long johns as well. So depends on, on the coldness, but my legs I usually cover up pretty good because it's, it's one of the spots that I get cold with are my legs um, and until I start moving around a lot, that's when it starts warming up and I like to be able to um, unzip them and take them off if I have to. So these cool ones, I'm sorry, these uh, QU ones, they zip and they also leave your ankles open so that you can wear taller boots and stuff like that and higher socks. So they're very good when it comes to um, giving you some versatility, uh, but they do, like they have zippers on the side. So if you lay on your side for a long duration of time, you're gonna feel them. Uh, it's not the most comfortable, but they do provide a lot of warmth and give you some versatility with the length. So they're not full length, so you can still get them, like you either wear higher socks with them, or you can wear higher boots and not have to put them in there. Um, and then you could also, when you want to unzip them, you just drop your trous, dr drop the zippers and they unbutton, boop, right off. And now you can just pull up your pants and continue rocking on. You don't have to take off your boots and all this other stuff. So really good for cold weather, really useful. Um, I'd say it's probably one of the, one of the more important things that I bring anytime it's cold out. I always bring long johns because I don't know if I'm going to wear them or not. Depending on how windy or how cold it is, I want to have them versus not have them. Um, secondly, on the, on the leg part is usually some form of really good socks. So I like using some um, medium weight wool or some more heavy weight wool, uh, depending on which, which flavor I need for the 
type of coldness I'm going into. If it's really, really cold and wet, then I will make sure I bring a couple sets of, of, um, of socks. That way I can choose from them and pick what I want and actually wear it for a while and be like, hey, you know what, they're getting a little wet or they're getting a little moist. I'm swapping before my toes get, get too cold. I want my stuff or I want my toes and my, my hands and my toes to be dry, right? It's easier to be dry cold than it is to be wet cold by far. Um, there's nothing that kills morale more than wet and cold at the same time. So I want to, I want to try and fight those two things as often as possible. And that sometimes means I have to take off my boots and do the swappy mix swapper sins as much as we don't want to. Um, then just like you guys saw in the previous two videos of this, uh, in summer and in just the rain, even in just the winter, I wear the same boots. So it's somewhat to be like consistent because I kind of like these boots a lot, but it's also because they just, they work. They're, they breathe enough. They're also, they're Gore-Tex. So if it's raining or if it's wet, cold, it still provides me something. And then they're, they're thin enough that I can wear thicker socks and protect my feet and not have to wear a thicker boot, right? Because then I, I start walking around in big Ugg boots and it ain't going to be comfy and I'm not going to be very mobile. So I like having the option and surprise, surprise, the same boots actually work for it. It took me some time to find the right boots that I liked because those you may not like. I like them though and they work really good for my feet and they worked really good for what I'm doing and I'm a pretty dang active dude. So I'm very happy with those and, uh, and my purchase. Now, going from there, right? A um, couple things, right? For your upper body. I'm a big fan of, of layering. So I will wear like a shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a waffle shirt, you know, a secondary layer before like a wind layer of some sort, if I needed to, right? Depending on the circumstances, it may, it may deem it. Sometimes it's just, Hey, I, I just wear a t-shirt and I just have to wear like a lightweight, jacket like the the lightweight um i believe this is the uh is it the alpha i think it's the lightweight alpha from arteryx um defense mechanisms also makes a very very nice version of this as well their lightweight jacket and i think it also uh, it gives me better pockets in my opinion but um but this is one of the ones i have that is really lightweight you can see it packs really well so you can like literally shove it in a backpack take it with you just in case anyways it's a really good jacket personally i travel with it quite often um i've only lost two of them so <laughs> so over the years but this is one of those jackets you can get in more of a smaller size because you could use it as a layer or you could use it as the outer layer for your inners um if you're gonna wear like a waffle top of some sort now waffle tops for me are normal normal wear when i'm i'm getting cold that's what i wear as a sweater most of the time uh, i don't wear a lot of like hoodies and stuff and if i do it's because i forgot my waffle top usually this is um like one of my staple like travel wear like i bring it on the airplane because it's like something i'm gonna throw on if i start getting chilly on a plane um same same like like i think it's a great inner layer this one's from defense mechanisms this is their like uh waffle top and I will pair this with this Arteryx lightweight jacket and put them together for most of my cold classes. So like I said, if it's getting to the thirties, this is what I'm wearing. If it's just in the fifties, this is what I'm wearing, you know, just a waffle top. So I can start to layer things as needed. So t-shirt, waffle top, this top, everything gets put into one and I don't have to worry about it. Or, um, man, I'm getting hot. I'll take this off and just wear this. Uh, you know what? This is too hot. Let me just wear this. Yeah, so I can I can mess around with how I layer, but I have to bring the stuff to layer. Now, let's talk getting colder than that. So when it starts getting even further down the the rabbit hole of coldness for me. That is where I wear a full on like not a parka, but it's a warm but water resistant and also wind resistant layer. It is really nice. I'll pair it with my waffle top. So for example, when I was out in the desert, it was, I think in the twenties and it was windy as shit. This was magnificent, this pair. So waffle top and this really thick, let's see what it's called. Cause I can't remember. Mm, I don't know. 
but it's from Arteryx. It's their heavy line or their Winter X, I believe, uh, line where it's it's very heavy, it's thick. It also has some warmth to it versus just being a shell. So just like the other, the rain layers that I was showing you guys in the previous videos, this one is straight up like thick. It's almost like a ski jacket. And it is magnificent when you, when you have to be in something like that for snow or you have to be in it for some kind of um, wet rain that's windy or like a really windy cold night. Very, very useful. Uh, I liked it. So as a tropical man, that's a very useful piece of equipment that I'll bring stay for cold weather and for very cold weather. But the majority of the time I travel with a waffle top and this lightweight um, Adam uh, from uh, Arteryx. So to top that off, right, I'll usually, you'll find me in a beanie a lot of the times. Um, I usually wear like a lighter weight beanie, not super thick, mainly because the super thick ones don't um, let my ear pro work properly. Now, if you do wear a beanie that's thicker because you want to warm more warmth, um, you can get in ear uh, ear pro to go ahead and go with that, so you're not blocking anything out very much for um, for nighttime classes or I'm sorry for uh, cold classes. So this provides that that nice nice warmth and still be able to wear your ear pro. Um, another little benefit or another thing that I would say is a really nice benefit is like some kind of neck gaiter. So pretty much this one's, uh, this one's a, uh, synthetic, like, uh, mixed with some wool and goes over my neck, sits there, keeps me nice and warm throughout the night. I like these. Um, I use them when I, I snowboard and stuff. So, uh, once again, as a tropical person in a cold environment, that's super useful. And then lastly is some kind of hand warmer or pocket. I use the one from Defense Mechanisms. It has um, some nice little areas where it protects your hands. On the inside, it's kind of like uh, lined with some kind of waffle material. Also has a pocket. So you put hand warmers in here. Uh, so like the hot hands, uh, you could put those in there. Uh, highly recommended by the way, hot hands. Uh, you could also put them across the front end as well. So you have some pockets that you could use. This will also hang off of the bottom of a plate carrier, or you can loop it like I have it. I have it set because it was just hanging off my belt recently. So really nice piece of equipment, very easy to use once again, and, uh, and provides at least some warmth for my hands. So if I'm, even if I'm wearing gloves, I want to keep them warm. Uh, I don't like having cold fingers. I find that that impedes this guy from doing his thing. So I like to keep them warm as much as possible. So whether you're learning or you're teaching, like you, you don't want to be underperforming or, or perform less than you, you're actually capable of because you want to, or because you didn't want to you know, warm your hands or whatever. So hot hands and also some kind of hand warmer like pouch be super useful. They make a ton of those things for hunting. Um, I mean, every hunting company like Sitka and um, QU or any hiking company, they all have their own variation, I'm sure. So highly recommended uh, if you're going to be in a cold environment for your, your class. Now, if we get into the super sub zero, like cold weather, I don't mess with that very often. And I actually, I would probably just wear what I normally wear, thicker stuff and and just more waterproofy stuff if it's snowing but uh but i don't use i don't actually play in that very often so maybe something for me to learn about and play around with more and kind of get to but clothing when going to your classes or if you're going to a class guys very important as you can see and hopefully this makes sense when it comes to the cold stuff like i'm saying like i said like from the 50s like i said cold for me i know some of you guys up north are gonna be like oh what about that i'm like shut up, come to the hot weather. See how that you deal with that, right? Um, I'm red. Uh, but, uh, but if you, if, and I'm going down to like the sub twenties and stuff like that, all those kind of weathers and I'm getting cold, whether it's wet, cold, or just dry cold, uh, I wear some variation of all of this and it gives me some form of comfort, but it also still gives me some form of mobility. So I'm not hindered by my clothing. Cause if you go out there and you're just like in a big parka, like you're not going to get anything out of that um, or out of that class. So I kind of stick to the same, um, I guess, principles as when I was in the military. I don't want to be warm. I want to be 
less than cold, right? And like, like to the point where I can still feel the cold, but I'm not, not hot. I'm just slightly comfortable, if that makes sense, or just slightly under or over the uncomfortable spot. And that way I stay relatively warm, but I still relatively cold so that I can still perform versus uh, being freezing and having the wrong socks or having just a hoodie and a t-shirt and freezing my dick off. So little things like that, guys. Um, hopefully this helps. Uh, just let me know in the comments. Take care.